Welcome back to part eight, 1949 Dumont TV Restore. Let's get started. Looking at this broken piece here, someone had attempted to do a bad repair. <laughs> but it will fit back tight. And I'm just gonna take all this old veneer off of here, get this cleaned off. We'll put the board back and I'll trim this back and put a new piece across. All right, have the board glued in behind the veneer. New veneer put on. Now this is peel and stick veneer. Got the 3M sticky back on it. Our repair seems to be dry, so let's trim off this veneer. We'll use a utility knife with a new blade. So, should trim off pretty easy. All right, that should be good. And we'll just take a paint paddle with some sandpaper stuck on it. Get a little sanding. Time to start stripping this finish off. I think this originally was what's called a red mahogany. Uh, that's what I plan on putting back on it as far as a stain color. And I'm going to try a technique that I used on a couple of radios I've restored. I'm going to take acetone and strip off that outer finish. And then I'll sand it and restain it, refinish it. And if it turns out like the radios I've done, that should should look fine. Now before I start stripping anything off, I do need to take some pictures of this Dumont emblem as to where the where it's located. I'll be starting on the top. That's what I'm using. Just plain old acetone. What I like about it, it doesn't harm your lungs. Really, there's not much of an odor to it at all. Where a lacquer thinner, that would work too, but it's really strong odor. Really, you probably need to be wearing a mask if you use it. Yeah, this is slow. It'll take a lot of patience. And like I say, it's just a safe way of doing it. Well, we got the top pretty much finished up. Uh, I only had like a half a quart of acetone. I'm going to have to get some more. But... Yeah, that outer finish is gone. Yeah, the color looks pretty uniform, so. Well, the acetone's working pretty well on the sides, the top, and this front. I'm gonna try some paint stripper. Just as an experiment, see if it's any faster. Here's what I'm gonna try, is a two minute remover. Well, that shouldn't take long. So we'll see if it lives up to its claims there on the can. Looks like it's peeling up a little. I don't believe it would do any better job than the acetone does, but it might be quicker. Yeah, making some pretty good progress. Done for the day. I've got probably 95% of the varnish or lacquer, whatever was on it, stripped off. So now we're ready to do some sanding. Here's what I'll be using to do the sanding on the cabinet. 
uh, these are sponge type sanding, sanding blocks and I just use sticky back paper sticks onto the block got different shapes uh, this was pretty much flat and, uh, this has got a round shape to it you can get down some crevices and then this is just a oval shape so should have the three combinations that we need there to get this cabinet sanded and here's a sticky back paper so we'll start with 320 and then we'll move on up to 400. We'll start on the sides first because really flat, not a lot of crevices that you have to get into. And, just, and there's one sanding on that side. Uh, you might wonder, well, why don't you use an electric sander, power sander? You know, make it go quicker. My reasoning on that, I've seen a lot of, a lot of veneer cabinets that have had sanders used to them, on them, electric sanders used on them, and they eat through the veneer on the edges. And it's just not a good thing. So I just do it by hand. That way I can kind of control how much I'm taking off. And you want to you want to sand with the grain. You can see the grain's running up and down on the side, so you want to sand up and down. If you go cross grain, you have sand marks. And while sanding, we'll get most of the outer finish off of this cabinet. These corners, they still has some residue built up and hard to get to so what I'm doing there I'm just taking some more acetone washing that out really good and here's a part I've already finished you can see the difference and toothbrush works good here in these corners I want to address this area under the front edge yeah, you'll probably never see that, but I want to clean that off too, along with this edge down through here. And the bottom. Scrape that off a little and wipe it off. And I'll take these feet off. They're pretty worn. Actually, the pad's gone pretty much and they're just resting on metal, so we'll, we'll address that too. But right now I'm going to just get them out of the way. All right, a little better. I wiped it off. Give it an acetone bath after I finish sanding. Now there's enough stain ingrained in this wood that I could urethane this right like it is and it would look fine. But the stain I've, I have is kind of a, it's got kind of a red cast to it. Uh, let me get a paint stick here and I'll show you. There's a stain that I'm gonna put on. And I think along with the stain that's already on there, that'll give it a good deep red cast. Before we do that, we'll look it over one more time, see if there's any bad places that we need to address. And then we'll use a tack rag, kind of like when you paint a car. We'll tack it off, get rid of, get rid of all the dust particles that we can. Here's one problem I found. See the veneer, how it's peeled up here at this front edge. And my remedy for that. Got a syringe with some carpenter's glue in it. Let's squirt that under there. Just use a wood clamp, piece of wood. Put it right on that edge. All right.
right, I think that'll get the job done. See if we can get some stain put on this today. But in looking it over one more time, I noticed we got a scratch right here. So I'm going to try to get that sanded out. Yeah, we had a little veneer missing here. What I've done, I filled it with some wood putty and I haven't sanded it, so smooth it down before I put some stain on. But otherwise, uh, the front looks really good. And our glue job on the veneer on the edge there, it's good and tight now. I uh, do need to do a little bit of sanding, get some of the glue residue off and, and re-sand that. All right, we took care of those places that we found so I'm going to give it one more acetone bath. We'll tack rag it off after the acetone dries and put some stain on. Be putting it on with a brush, uh, specifically to get in these crevices, and I'll wipe off the excess with these rags. I think I'm going to like this color. Where this brush works well to get in those crevices. All right, that's a coat of stain. Definitely could have got by with probably a pint of stain, but I'll have this for other projects in the future. But you see I used about an inch out of that can is all I used out of that quart. Here's the stain I used. Uh, color is called Cabernet. And in reading the directions on the back, it says after two hours you can put a second coat. So we'll let this We'll let the first coat dry, and two or three hours later, we'll go back and put a second coat. According to the clock on the wall, it's 9.38. So around noon or so, we can put a second coat. It's 1.30, so we've been four hours since that first coat of stain. And it seems to be dry. So we're gonna, we're gonna go with one more coat. Here's a polyurethane we're going to be using. And I want to stir this really well. Don't want to shake it. That'll put air bubbles in it. So we'll stir it up. Got a good clean paint container to put it in. Got a new purdy brush. Try not to put this on really heavy on the first coat. And starting on the edge and pulling it toward me on this right side. And again, we're going with the grain. I'm by no means an expert on woodworking, wood finishing. I don't do too bad on the, the working part to build it, but I'm not a very good finisher. But doing the best I can. On the left side, we go toward the middle. And let the light reflect in it. Look at it this way to see if I missed any places. Looks like a dull spot right there. Right, that looks like that's covered, except for around right on the bottom here. The two 
the lower trim piece there. stop like I said it's just as light as I could put it on we're going to stop there we'll let that dry do a little sanding and then put another coat well we're out of time I know this has been a long series on restoring this set but I'm going to do my best to wrap it up with one more video so see you then we hope you've enjoyed this video if you did hit the like button, and we'd love it if you would subscribe to our channel. Thanks.